While giving a definition of the fourth dimension is easy, getting an intuitive understanding can be quite difficult. To put it officially, the fourth dimension is all space that one can get to by traveling in a direction perpendicular to three-dimensional space. We can see a short explanation gives us no intuitive feeling of the fourth dimension. In order to give this definition justice, we must first visualize and understand 4D space. The world around us exists in three-dimensional space. Mathematically, these pairs of directions correspond with three coordinate axes, which are conveniently labeled X, Y, and Z. In the 4D world, there is another directional axis, W, which is perpendicular to these axes. This new axis also has positive and negative directions. We may be tempted to try to point in the direction of 4D, but this is impossible because we are confined to 3D space. We may believe that it is impossible for us to visualize 4D since we are confined to 3D and therefore cannot directly experience it. However, it is possible to develop a good idea of what 4D objects look like. The key lies in the fact that to see n dimensions, one only needs an n-1 dimensional retina. Even though we are 3D beings who live in a 3D world, our eyes actually see only in 2D. Our retina has only a 2D surface area with which it can detect light coming into our eye. What our eye sees is in fact not 3D, but a 2D projection of the 3D world we are looking at. In spite of this, we are quite able to grasp the concept of 3D. Our mind is quite facile at reconstructing a 3D model of the world around us from the 2D images seen by our retina. It does this by using indirect information in the 2D images such as light and shade, parallax and previous experience. Even though our retina doesn't actually see 3D depth, we instinctively infer it. We have a very good intuitive grasp of what 3D is, to the point that we are normally quite unconscious of the fact that we are only seeing in 2D. Similarly, a hypothetical 4D being would have a 3D retina and would see the 4D world as 3D projections. The key here is that what the 4D being sees in its retina is 3-dimensional not four-dimensional. The fourth dimension is inferred. But since we have a good intuitive grasp of 3D, it's not that difficult to understand what a 4D being sees in its retina. From there, we just need to learn how to infer 4D depth. Since we are visualizing 4D, let us take it from a 2D point of view. As you 3D beings have a 2D retina, hypothetically, 2D beings would have a 1D retina. Consider how we 3D beings may try to explain what a cube is like to a 2D being. We may try to draw a diagram of a cube, thus, since this diagram can be entirely contained in a 2D surface, we may imagine that the 2D being would see it as we do, a hexagon with three lines within, meeting at the center. However, this is what the 2D being actually sees. Even after walking around the diagram and looking at it from every angle, the most the 2D being can discern is that the diagram is a hexagon. It cannot see the three edges inside the diagram at all. To help our 2D being see the entire diagram, we would need to erase parts of the edges so that it can walk into the hexagon and explore the three quadrilateral rooms within it, thus forming a kind of mental floor plan of our diagram. In other words, what is to us an obvious diagram of a cube is far from obvious from a 2D being's point of view. We can see the diagram of a cube from our overhead 3D point of view and we can see every part of it simultaneously. The 2D being has no such luxury. It has to painstakingly explore each part of the diagram separately. The similar situation applies to us when we attempt to visualize higher dimensions. We shall now use dimensional analogy to investigate the perspective projection of a 3D cube as it gets rotated through 4D. This will greatly help us understand projections of 4D objects later on. We'll start by taking a look at a 2D square rotating in 3D. Imagine if a 2D being were looking at this animation. Remember, the 2D being can only see the animation edge on. From that point of view, the 2D being sees a truly strange object that appears to be constantly morphing and performing incredible feats of turning inside out. Now. Let's take a look at the analogous situation of a 3D cube rotating in 4D and see if we can make sense of it. The cube appears to be turning itself inside out and outside in. 
one of its faces appears to be growing and shrinking, and its side faces appear to be distorting into trapezoids. However, the cube isn't actually being distorted. It only appears that way because it is rotating through the fourth dimension. Likewise, 4D rotations to us 3D beings appear to involve incredible feats of turning inside out, but they are really perfectly ordinary rotations through 4D. The inside out effect is merely an artifact of projecting 4D into 3D. Let us look at the projection of the 3D cube. As 3D beings, we know that the inside of the cube lies in the volume between the six faces of the cube. But if a 2D being were to examine this projection of the cube, this inside would be rather elusive. Since the entire image is contained inside the outer square, it might think that the inside is simply the four trapezoids and the inner square. Upon being told that the inside of the cube lies between the inner and outer squares, it might incorrectly think that you are referring to the area covered by the four trapezoids. As we know, this is not the case. The four trapezoids are only the boundary of the volume inside the cube. This is hard for the 2D being to understand. The six faces already fill up the entire square area of the image. Where else is the space for the inside of the cube? The answer, of course, lies in the fact that there is 3D depth involved here. The inner square is deeper in the third direction than the outer square, so there is lots of room between them for the inside of the cube. The magenta square is moving back and forth between the left and right faces of the cube. Can you see how it sweeps out the volume and close inside the cube? Now look at the 4D case. Where is the inside of the hypercube? Dimensional analogy tells us that it must lie between all 8 cubes that form the boundary of the hypercube. However, when we look at the image above from our 3D perspective, we can see nowhere for this inside to fit. The 8 cubes have already filled up the entire cubical volume of the image. Where else is the space for the inside of the hypercube? The answer should be clear if we apply dimensional analogy. There is 4D depth involved here. The inner cube is deeper in the fourth direction than the outer cube. So there is ample room in between for the inside of the hypercube. The magenta frustum is actually a cube moving back and forth between the left and right cells of the hypercube. It traces out the 4D hypervolume enclosed inside it. Notice that it appears to be turning inside out as it crosses the middle of the hypercube. However, the cube is not actually turning inside out. Let's look at the same hypercube again from a slightly different angle. Don't be surprised by the odd appearance of this projection. This is still the same hypercube we are looking at. We have only shifted our viewpoint a little. Now we are looking at the right square face of the blue cube that it shares with the frustum on the right. What's happening here? The left square face of the blue cube is now larger than its right square face. Remember what we just said about size implying 4D distance? In particular, relative sizes imply relative distance. The fact that the left square face is larger than the right square face means that it is closer to 4D viewpoint than the right face. For one face of the blue cube to be closer than the other face means that the blue cube is now at an angle from our viewpoint. Compare this with another situation below. Notice how the blue square when seen from an angle, appears as a trapezium with its left edge longer than its right edge. It is exactly the same situation in the 4D case. Can you see the analogy? Let's see how confident we are in inferring 4D depth. What is closest to the 4D viewpoint in the right image? Can you guess? The answer is the square face that bisects the image shown in red below on the right. To help you understand why this is so, the left image shows the situation in 3D with the nearest edge colored in red. Notice how it projects to the center of the image. You can see that in the 4D case, everything has gone up by one dimension. What about the farthest ridge? In the 3D case, the farthest edge is obviously the short edge behind the red edge. The 4D case is shown to the right. This should be simple to understand. Notice how the farthest ridge also projects to the center of the projection image just like the nearest ridge. It is interesting that both the nearest and farthest features of the hypercube project to the center of the image.